Let me say something about the Gospel of Mark that we're, we find ourselves in. I love the Gospel of Mark. I love how fast-paced and hard-hitting it is. Mark puts in your face the fact that Jesus of Nazareth is the Son of God. He doesn't leave you with any room for neutrality. And there's this other theme that sort of courses its way through Mark. It's that Christ has collected these followers, these disciples, and his intention is not that they would just be recipients of his work of his kingdom, but they would be instruments of the work of that kingdom. And if they were going to be that, they, they must be men of faith. And he's working to craft faith in them. And he would do that by introducing the disciples to some kind of difficulty. And in the midst of that difficulty, Jesus would reveal his glory. There's a, there's a bit of a divine equ- or gospel equation that courses its way through Mark. Here it is. Divine power plus divine compassion equals everything you need. Divine power plus divine compassion equals everything you need. DP plus DC equals EYN for you mathematicians in the room. Well, we find in the beginning of this passage the disciples in another moment of difficulty. They're trying to row their way across the Sea of Galilee. They're facing an impossible headwind, angry seas. They're in a situation way beyond their ability, a situation they cannot solve. They've been in this situation for many hours. If you look at the larger time clues in the passage, they've probably been rowing for eight hours. It's a mess. And as you, as you read Scripture, you ought to read Scripture interactively. You should not read Scripture passively. And when you see the disciples in this mess, you ought to ask yourself, how did these guys get themselves in this mess? It's, it's dangerous. It's, it's exhausting. It's discouraging. It's difficult. How did they get themselves in this mess? Well, look at verse 45. Perhaps you would be tempted to think maybe they were just unwise. Maybe they're just full of themselves. Maybe they've been disobedient. Maybe this was another foolish choice. And none of those things are true. If you look at verse 45, it says, Immediately he, Christ, made his disciples get in the boat. This moment of difficulty is Christ's moment of difficulty. This moment where the disciples are facing Uh, this impossible headwind and this angry sea and this moment that's way beyond their their natural ability and natural wisdom is exactly where Christ wants them to be. And when you read that in Scripture, you ought to ask yourself the question, why? Why would Jesus ever want his followers to be in a moment like this. I thought he was a God of grace. I thought he was a God of mercy. I thought he was a God of love. What's up with this? Well, Jesus knows something about the men in the boat. He knows how self-righteous they can be. He knows how full of their confidence in their own strength and wisdom they can be. He knows how much they, they can be committed to the, their own little kingdoms rather than the work of his greater kingdom. So hear this. Jesus will take his disciples where they haven't intended to go in order to produce in them what they could not achieve on their own. God will take you where you haven't intended to go in order to produce in you what you could not achieve on your own. God will take you where you haven't intended to go in order to produce in you what you could not achieve on your own. You know what the Bible calls that? Grace. It's grace. It's grace. I think there are moments where we're going through difficulty and we're crying out, where is the grace of God? And we're getting it. No, it's not the grace of relief, and it's not the grace of release. Yes, we get those in pieces, but largely those are to come. It's the grace right now that we need, the grace of personal transformation, the grace of personal refinement. I think that we better become faithful and committed to encourage and teach and preach, hear this term, the theology of uncomfortable grace. 
Because often God's grace comes to us in uncomfortable forms. If you're God's child and you're going through difficulty, you must not name that difficulty as a sign of God's unfaithfulness and inattention. You must not bring God into the court of your judgment and question his faithfulness and love. Those difficulties are, in fact, a sure sign of the zeal of his love. You are being loved. He will take you where you haven't intended to go in order to produce in you what you could not achieve on your own. That's grace. Grace. 